hey Jelani, thanks for taking the time today. No Go, going through the meetings, I'm curious what you identified as maybe the keys to cleaning up to um, avoid some of the big plays that, that hit you yesterday. Just sticking to what what we have planned. You know, we got to start faster. Um, we can't have those long drives. We got to get off the field, and we just got to make sure that we do do our jobs. How would you describe the um, the mood among the guys coming here today? Uh, we're just pissed off. You know, we're pissed off because it's uh, games like that where you know, um, and I'm just talking about the defensive side because uh, you know we meet separately. Uh, we're pissed off on the defensive side, and we just we got a lot of proof. Got to do our jobs. Uh, Chris Price, followed by Chris Ryan. Jelani, thank you for taking the time to do this today. When we talked to uh, Gerard a little bit earlier on those two 50-yard runs, the two things that he brought up specifically were poor run fits and poor tackling. I'm curious to get your take from a specific, from a player's point of view, on those two 50-yarders what you saw and where things maybe kind of broke down a little bit for you? No, he said it, he said it perfectly. We we didn't we didn't do our uh, our jobs, and you know when it comes down, we got to make sure we we you know tackle the guy who's got the ball. You know we were just it was a little sloppy on on those two plays, and you know we got to fix it because teams are gonna try and run those against us soon. Thank you, uh, Chris Ryan, followed by Dan Rote. Hey, thanks uh, for be uh, thanks for taking some time, Jelani. Just um, kind of off of what Chris was asking, you know, when it comes to the fundamentals, when it comes to you know the the tackling and the things that are kind of the draws that you're missing from this group, is it just a matter of you know, cleaning it up? It, what do you see as as being you know, kind of the what's what's the challenge in, in getting it done versus obviously just you know, Bert talking about it? I mean, you just said it. I mean, you just get, we just got to get it done. You know, it's a mentality that we have to have each and every play. You know, there was plays where when they try to run the ball, we would stop in the back in the backfield. So when we have those type of plays, we're, we need to build on those good plays. You know, when we when we force them to one yard gains, two yard gains, like those are the we have to just be consistent and and just do our jobs. Also, how do you address obviously the changes in personnel where a, you had a real veteran core to start this year, a lot of younger players kind of being put put into uh, situations they're trying to figure out what they're doing. How do you address that as as a veteran? And is that also not an excuse, but you know a real reason as to um, some of the difficulty that you've had over the last few weeks? And there's no there's no excuse. You know what what what, what we're doing is on us, and you know, we gotta. We we have to take accountability for what's going on. You know, we can't we can't blame the newer guys because it's us vets that are you know there's who aren't consistent. You know, there's like whether it's every five plays we're doing well and then one play we're we're not and then we're back to being five. You know, like that's unacceptable. So we're gonna make sure that everybody's on the same page and um, you know we're all we're all to blame right now. So we're gonna we're gonna fix it and figure it out. Figure it out. Thank you. Next question, Dan Roach, followed by Ian Steele. Hi, Jelani. Just to kind of follow up on that, how, how correctable in your mind are all these mistakes? And, and how much is it physical versus mental mistakes when you guys are doing this together as a group out there? I mean, it's when you watch the film, it's it's very simple stuff. It's, it's stuff that we don't ever do. You know, when we, when we practice, we know that those are the big plays that are going to – or big runs that they, they love to run. And – we're reading our keys well, so when it comes to the game, whether it's we got to get more conditioning in or or just you know meet more together, whatever it is, you know we gotta we gotta make sure everyone is dialed in because when we when when we do have everyone on the same page, like I said before, you know we're stopping them in the backfield. We're it's a one yard gain instead of those sixty yard plus runs. So um, we just gotta be consistent. Thank you. Uh, Ian Steele. Jelani, thanks for the time. Um, talking to Gerard and some of the coaches uh, over the past couple of days, it's it's rare to hear them just kind of so upset with the defense. Is that what you're hearing in the meetings, just saying, you know, how how 
last game went and, and you know how you guys are working to correct them. We, I mean, we don't we don't need to just we don't need to hear the, the coaches talking about them being upset because we should already be upset. You know, whether because you know forty one points is unacceptable. Over a hundred yards rushing is unacceptable for us. That you know that those are those are things that we have standards on and and we're not living up to, or we're not playing to our standards. So you know we should be pissed off. It, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be coming from the coaches. You know, so um, we're definitely hearing the message from them. But again, this is a player's game, so it's on us as players to understand that and and fix the problem. And I know we will. And the last question, Mike, Jelani, spinning it forward, you guys are going to London for your next game. What are your thoughts on that? And what have you learned about these international games to be at your best, you know, when the ball's in the air Sunday? What was the first one? What was the first question? What, what, are, you, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on going to London? Play oh, I mean, it's another football game, you know. Um, it doesn't matter where we're playing. It's a, it's a football game. It's another day for us to – another day and another opportunity for us to – you know, play to our standard. You know, tomorrow we're gonna have to figure. Uh, we're gonna have to watch the film um, on Jacksonville tonight. We're gonna have to watch the film on Jacksonville and really, you know, focus on what you know. What's hurt us hurt us in the past uh, in our past games and and make sure that you know when when uh, Jacksonville tries to run those plays or whether they want to run their top plays, we gotta make sure that we're all on the same page um, on the defensive standpoint. And, um, you know, everything will work work itself out. So, uh, like I said, and then um, what was the second one, Mike? I, I was just saying, you know, these international games, you're, you're traveling further. What have you learned from your experience in those games that have you at your best when the ball's in the air? Um, I've learned that you better get some sleep on the plane. Learn to sleep on the plane rides. and um, But, yeah, whether it's a long, long flight or whatever, there's no excuse to – to anything, you know, it's just, like I said, it's another game. Thank, thanks for taking the time today. No problem. That's it for today, guys. Thanks, Jelani. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Ben, thanks for doing this this afternoon. Um, curious about the acclimation process with Drake over the course of the the, the, the days leading up to, to Sunday's game. What was that like? Was it accelerated at all? And once you were able to get in the game and kind of get a rhythm going, any sort of problems that anything unexpected crop up along the way? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, Drake caught me up to speed with everything real quick, was able to work with him, you know, trying to get all the things down quick that normally you work on throughout the year, like cadence and, you know, any points in the run game or anything or any points in protection. Um, so he really helped me out uh, just being confident out there and being able to play fast and free. Thanks. Next question, Mike Reese. Hey, Ben, um, how would you describe the last four or five days? Uh, crazy, for sure. Um, obviously, very blessed to be here. Um, very excited to be here. Uh, just want to do my best to help this team win and to ultimately to, to do my job at the best of my potential. You know, um, but I'm very excited to be here. It's been a very crazy uh, past few days, um, but uh, very blessed to be here, though. And how would you describe your, your personal football journey? Um, I think it's been one that's uh, it's had its ups and downs for sure. I mean, coming out of college, I was uh, undrafted. And then my first preseason game in Cincinnati, I blew my bicep, you know. Uh, so that was obviously... That was really hard to be able to grind through and to come back to camp in Cincinnati and uh, not make the 53 or the practice squad. And then Seattle picked me up on their practice squad and I was on their uh, their 53 for probably six weeks or so, maybe seven. And then I was on their practice squad for a month. And uh, then I wasn't on a team in the month of December. I was just doing workouts with teams and, you know, working out and training and uh, finish up the regular season last year with the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, I signed a futures with the Raiders and uh, went through all camp with Las Vegas and all of OTAs and everything. And obviously I was on their practice squad uh, this season until just a few days ago. Uh, so, you know, it's it's been a long journey. Um but I think my faith and my family has 
has really helped me, you know, to keep pushing and to keep fighting. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Alex Barth, followed by Taylor Kyles. Hey, Ben, uh, I'm just wondering the process of getting prepared for Saturday. I know you, you said Drake helped you, but had you ever gone through anything like that, like having to prepare for a game in such a short period of time? Uh, no, I actually have not uh, gone through, you know, game prep in such a short period of time. Um, but I think I really think all the coaches and all my teammates really just made that job so much easier for me. I mean, everyone, you know, just told me just to play fast and, you know, don't worry about technique. Just make sure we're all going to the right guys. And, uh, you know, that's what I tried doing. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have done any of this by myself. So I really appreciate all the help that I've gotten from all my coaches and all my teammates. Was there a point during the game where maybe th things started to slow down for you or? Um, you know, you know, the big thing for me was I didn't want to go out there and just panic and being perfect. You know, um, obviously we strive for perfection playing in the NFL. Um, but I think the big thing for me was just to to play free and, you know, to do my best and, you know, rely on my teammates and coaches if if I had any questions on anything. Um, so that's that's what I did. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Taylor Kyles, followed by Dan Rose. Oh, wrong camera. That's okay. Hey, Ben, thank you so much for your time, man. Welcome to New England. Uh, I was wondering, looking at your film, man, you play with some nastiness in your game, a lot of physicality. So I was wondering, for anybody who's not familiar with your game, can you describe yourself as a player, your skill set, and also where that edge comes from? Um, You know, I just try to play tough, try to play every snap through the whistle. Um, I've played with a lot of great teammates over the years that have uh, really helped me. Uh, help me uh, become a better player and, uh, you know, just growing through the years and, you know, playing more football, uh, I think has, has helped out a lot. Um, but I just try to be as physical as I can and, you know, play through the whistle every time. And are there any players on the Patriots you were familiar with before you got here? Um, I, I was familiar with Jalen. Uh, we were in uh, Las Vegas together, so that was, uh, that was pretty cool. But other than that, no, uh, not many. Thank you for your time, brother. Welcome. Of course. Thank you. Dan Roach, followed by Sophie Weller. Hi, Ben. Welcome to New England. Um, Thank you. Just a thought on, you mentioned how much Drake was a help during the week and what have you. What was your thoughts on Drake? I mean, all of us got to see him start for the first time. You'll forever get on in Patriots history as the starting center in his first ever uh, start in the NFL. What would you think of his game? What was it like to be with him in the huddle? Take us through your day with him. Man, I thought Drake did awesome. You know, it's it's tough playing in the NFL, especially as a rookie and having all that pressure that he has. Um, I think he handled it perfect. I think he really took control of our offense. And, uh, you know, there was no hesitation when he was in, and I felt completely confident when he was back there at quarterback. And that makes my job a lot easier, having a confident quarterback back there. And uh, I thought he played a great game. And what was it like when he first got into the huddle with him? It was like, you know, Hey, is this cool or kind of you're both kind of thrown into this, uh, the whole thing yesterday? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's definitely crazy for sure. Uh, but I think he was confident back there. And, you know, that his confidence makes me confident, you know, and it makes the whole offense and the whole team confident, you know. And so seeing that from someone at such a, a younger age, being a rookie, you know, is, is very special to see. And not everyone has that. So uh, I, I think it was uh, it was great seeing him out there. So. Thank you. Of course. Looks like the last question will be Sophie Weller. Hi, Bing. Nice to talk to you again. Um, this morning, Gerard actually said that you were the probably the best lineman out there yesterday. Um, considering this kind of whirlwind week you had coming in so quickly, what is it like to hear something like that from the head coach, uh, having just been thrown into everything? Uh, it was great. You know, I very thankful to hear that. Um, but obviously I care more about winning, you know, and there's a lot that I have to clean up individually. Um, and there's a lot that I have to do better as well. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is winning. So uh, we're excited for another opportunity in London next week. So. 
Thank you, Ben. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Bryce, how you doing today? Um, <laughs> great. Thank you. Bryce, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thanks for taking the time today. Um, let, let, let's just start with um, the new snapper this week. Yeah. I wanted to just get your feedback on, you know, obviously um, that's a significant change when you do sure. that. How did it, how did it go? Good. I mean, obviously it's, it's good. You know, when, I mean, we've, been, we've worked with Tuck before in the past um, and I thought he did a just an outstanding job coming in on short notice and um, being able to go out and perform. I thought he did awesome. As you went through meetings today, Bryce, special teams wise, I'm curious what you guys identified with your units, you know, that you feel like was good and, and what yeah. areas you'd like to see upgraded or improved, yeah. I should say. Sure. Um, from a punt standpoint, I thought we covered really well. Obviously, I need to do my part better um, on that first punt of the game. Um, nonetheless, I thought Dial and Schools covered really well. Uh, the fellas protected great. Um, you know, Houston, they have a very, very physical, just special teams unit as a whole in their four core as well. Um, you know, we just need to be able to match that intensity. Um, and that's kind of just what we, I feel like, as a unit need to do moving forward is is play with that energy. Because um, you never know with our units, it could be one play and we can change a game. So whether it's punt return, kickoff return, kickoff punt, doesn't matter. We'll go to Chris Ryan next. Hey, Bryce, hope all is well with you. Just how would you evaluate um, how you've punted, you know, this year, not about a third of the way through the season? Have you liked what you've you've put on tape and the opportunity you know, you've given, you know, the coverage guys to make plays? Yeah, I feel like um, it's not just one person. You know, I feel like I can't get a good punt off if, you know, it starts with the snap, goes into protection, and then I go through my process. And then after that, you know, it, it's – we have – in my opinion, the best special teams player um, right now in, in schools. And I, I think he's done a phenomenal job. And Dial stepping up in a big role. Dell stepped up in a really big role. And having guys like Jelani and Raekwon and Christian, uh, Tay and Hawk all playing very large roles on defense on my unit as well is immensely helped, I would say. Um, I feel like I've taken a lot of really good steps um, from last year to this year. Um, I feel like, you know, Coach Quinn and Coach um, Springer have, have definitely helped me develop a process. Same thing with Joey and, and Joe. They've kind of helped me from a player side, Coach Quinn and Coach Springer from a coaching side in development. Um, but at the end of the day, I just feel like I take it one punt at a time. And, um, you know, each situation is different. I feel like I can still improve and um, playing the game, the game within the game. So understanding certain situations better, like not going too far back, but last week with the Miami game, understanding, you know, those certain situations and a half um, and what kind of ball we need and, and what we have to have at that point in time. You mentioned something earlier that schools is the best uh, special teams player in the league. What stands out to you about why that is obviously it seems like you can do multiple things in terms of making tackles blocks uh, we've seen him obviously block a field goal is it the the ability to do many things well why do you think you obviously watch you know uh, what other teams do what do you what do you see that makes schools the best well i'll say this th that's my opinion and i don't want to put that pressure on him at all i want him to be his own person play his own game and I trust that he'll go out and give his full 110% effort every single time. So I don't want to label him as that. That's just my opinion. But what he brings to the table is, is a leader. Um, he puts it on tape every day in practice and in games. You know, I say he gives 110% because he goes that extra mile, whether it's in workouts, in practice, trying to help out the younger guys and just be that role model for our core group. Um, and I think that's been huge this year for us. Thank you. Uh, next question, Chris Price. And I'd ask anybody else to raise a hand if you have a question for Bryce. Hey, Bryce, two real quick questions. First of all, do you care or does it matter who your personal punt protector is? And if so, how much input do you have into something like that? For, that's the first question I got. 
Yeah, so I, I stay out of the personnel department. You know, I feel like that's definitely on the coaches. Um, I feel that, you know, Dell's done a really, really good job, you know, being a rookie and coming in and, and learning how to be the quarterback of this unit. Um, but no, I, I personally have no say in that. I think he's done an awesome job, though. Uh, second question, we've had a chance to watch you and Joey go through your pregame routine, and it's a very deliberate pregame routine, uh, yeah. watching from, from the press box. Walk us through what that's like and, and what sort of responsibility do you have when you're talking with Joey? I imagine it's about wind, cloud cover, that kind of stuff. W what does that look like for you from a pregame perspective? Yeah, I mean, the cliche is it's kind of like a golfer in the caddy. Um and, you know, when, when Joey and I are discussing, like you said, a lot of it is with wind and with lines, you know, what our starting line is for our kick. Um, and, you know, you never know what kind of weather or wind you're going to get here. Um, you know, personally, I felt like it shifted about midway through the game yesterday where I thought I could go both ways. And then I started, you know, to say, hey, I'm going to play this way the rest of the game. Um and so that's kind of ideas that we bounce off of one another during the game, pregame. But I think pregame is really valuable because it gives us our time to it – it allows us to take our time and process kind of everything and have that very clear communication. Because once we get out there on the field, we're just checking in, hey, we're good. I know what Joey wants. We discuss that before we go out, and we just try and go out and execute. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to Mike Reese. Bryce, um, you mentioned golf there. I wanted to mention baseball. There's a saying that when something good is happening in baseball, maybe you don't mention it as it's happening because you don't yeah. want it to stop. Similar in football as it relates to whether it's punting, field goal kicking, if you, you yeah. is there a similar feel? I guess I guess you could kind of relate that to the announcers jinx like oh this guy hasn't missed and whatever um I think for us in in our unit and I feel like Joey and I have done a good job in this is we've stayed in the moment and kind of you know each kick has a life of its own each play has a life of its own um and obviously whether it's good or bad we're very keen on what happened you know what can we evaluate in the short time and then we're moving on to the next rep um, and I feel like we've both done a really good job of that, make or miss, good punt or bad punt. I feel like we've been able to put the good and the bad to the side, not necessarily behind us, but understand that there's a lot more football to play at the end of the day. So just following up on that, like if you had something good going on, is it something that you're, you're good talking about? You'd rather not, you know what I mean? Like, like. It's a, like, so if yeah. you had like a streak of a certain amount of games of a, a certain yardage of a punt, like, does sure. that matter? Does it matter to you? You know, ex, yeah. you know, sometimes a, a plus 50 might not even, not a plus 50, a 50 plus yard might not even be what you want in that situation. Exactly. So, so exactly. I guess my question is, tell me what that even means to you, if anything. Yeah. So frankly, like that stat, obviously it doesn't mean too much to me. Obviously it's really cool that it's going on. But I don't think about that. I don't think, oh, my gosh, I have to hit a 50-yard punt here. I have to keep my streak alive. When I go out and take the field, what I think about is what can I do to help our team in the best way that I can? Um, and whether that's, you know, just hitting my ball, whether it goes 65 yards or it goes 48 yards, good hang time. I'm trying to put our team in the best position possible. I'm trying to help our gunners. Um, with direction and hang time. I'm trying to help the defense with our starting field position to back the other team up. Um, but to your point, like you said, there's a lot of times where you never know. Um, I could have an entire game where I'm only hitting plus 50 punts. And, you know, if I if that, like you were talking about, that streak is broken, I'm more concerned about how did I operate today to help our team win. It's not necessarily, it's a cool stat to have, um, but I just want to, I want to help our team the best way that I can. And if that means hitting five or six 40 yard punts from the 50 that are down on the 10, that's what I'm going to do. Thanks for taking the time today. Appreciate it. Yeah.
Thank you, Bryce. Thanks, everyone.